Where do you think the country is on Brexit? And what do you make of Jeremy Corbyn's hardening of a Labour position now to say that we must stay in a customs union? Well, we're beginning to have a debate about it. We weren't sure what exactly was the government's position, though it was against the customs union. What Jeremy said now, well, let's that be a point of discussion. That is now happening, but you can see it's causing bitterness in the Tory ranks. Let's have the debate because we were able in Parliament to actually put into the debate that Parliament will decide it once we know all the facts. The debate has started, let's hear the facts, and then we have to make a choice. Lord Heseltine, a lot of people saying that when people voted, they voted clearly to get out of the EU, they voted to come out of the single market, they voted to come out of the customs union. Other people saying that there was never that level of detail in the debate, and people didn't vote on that. Do you think that was a failure of the campaign in the run-up to the referendum? Well, I think people were fed up. The, the economic living standards have been frozen since 2008, and <clears throat> they were looking for a scapegoat. Uh, immigration played a significant part, but the idea that the issue of the customs union was big in people's minds is just unrealistic. But I've been warning my party for some time that the Labour Party would actually change its position, which it's now doing. The Tories will be left handling the responsibility for Brexit, which is, of course, now patently becoming a, a major problem. <coughs> Rather than the fastest growing economy in Europe, we've got the slowest. We've got rising living uh, inflation and therefore st uh, stagnant living standards. And <coughs> the... Uh, progress uh, of negotiations is painfully slow. So um, the Tories are going to be left holding the baby. And indeed, the future of this country's relationship with Europe now depends, in my view, on the courage of a limited number of very brave Conservative members of Parliament who are going to do that thing that people say politicians will never do, stand by their convictions and vote for what they believe in but the national they, interest. But if they do, Lord Heseltine, if, if these brave Conservatives decide to stand up to their own government and their own Prime Minister, then, of course, it could trigger the collapse of the government, a new snap election, and Labour at the moment have their gander up, and there's no guarantee that the Conservative Party would win another general election. <coughs> Again, I have warned the Conservative Party of that risk. There are a significant number of people who believe that, frightening though the prospect of a Corbyn government is, it is less frightening than exposing Britain to the loneliness of being outside the European Union. So there's a terrible dilemma, and particularly for the young people, who frankly have limited memories, quite understandably, of what Corbyn is all about, but who do know that they feel betrayed that they have been excluded, their future has been excluded from the biggest marketplace on offer to us. OK, Lord Prescott, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn's speech yesterday clearly committed Labour, if they were in power, to staying within a customs union, but he still says he's committed to Brexit. Well, don't forget, he actually said, and indeed the party has always said, yes, we're prepared to look at it, but we want to negotiate. We thought the Prime Minister was wrong when she said she outlawed any idea of a customs union. Now we'll have to negotiate, but we also forced the government to recognise when they didn't want to, Parliament will have a vote on the final decision. Now, that's quite important, and I don't know whether Michael agreed with that or not. He disagrees with the government's anal analysis, but... For Parliament to have the say on it, when the government opposed, is right, and I look forward to the debate and the vote. Can I ask Lord Hesseltine quickly, do you believe it is possible or even a, a good idea that this country would have a second referendum once Parliament has had the debate Lord Prescott is talking about and we know what the deal is that we are actually looking at going forward? 
Well, I think it needs another general election or a referendum, certainly, because the basis of the last general election was a deceit. We all know about the £350 million a week. Uh, we know of the rosy future that was painted, of which not a shred of evidence has emerged since. Uh, we were told that there'd be no problem in Northern Ireland. It's quite obvious there's a major problem with the border there in Northern Ireland. So the whole referendum campaign was a deceit. And, it, it, of course, there will come a time when people realise the reality of what leaving Europe means. Uh, and at that stage, my own view is that uh, uh, Parliament, uh, a general election or a referendum, will have the final say. And just to deal with your point, uh, I got sacked by the Prime Minister because I voted in the House of Lords to make sure that Parliament did have the final say. Within a few weeks, she'd actually agreed that that was the right position. But I'd been sacked in the meantime. Have you ever seen a more hopeless leader of the Conservative Party, Lord he Heseltine? He also said there wouldn't be a vote. Mm. Well, let me, just, let me just ask Lord Heseltine, not just on my question. Uh, I, I, have, you, have you ever known I, a more... A more a, well, let me put it a nicer way. A weaker leader of the Conservative Party than Theresa May right now? Well, the weakness is born of a very simple fact. The cabinet is divided, the party is divided, and the country is divided, and there is absolutely no consensus. Uh, the pressure is being exerted by a limited number of Conservative MPs and a handful of uh, mass circulation newspapers um, in order to try and deceive the British people as to what the options are. But the options are becoming clearer as every day goes past and the British people are entitled to be treated as adults and given a chance to vote about that. Lord the government's divided. Mm. The government's divided. It doesn't know what to do. How can it negotiate with 27 other countries on the most important decision facing Britain? This Prime Minister is not up to it. She's got a divided government, and frankly, we should so shortly move to a general election and get rid of her and her divided government. All right, but Lord Prescott, did you ever imagine in a million years that you might genuinely be contemplating Jeremy Prime Minister Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn? <laughs> yes, well, yes, we've elected a leader, and I think the elections that, and, and the debates that have gone, his elections, both in the party and in the country, have shown that they think he's a serious contender to be Prime Minister. It's only the hostile media of the kind of campaign they've been running that they fear to death that that may come true. I hope it does. I believe it will. And why doesn't she test the country? Uh, that's the way to decide well, it. She might be forced to at some stage. Lord Prescott, Lord Heltertine, thanks very much indeed. Good to talk to you both this morning.